of repentance with dreams of the good life. My love Dying daily, taking up your cross, suffering, sacrificing, have been superseded with name it and claim it. The Sheila's a He's always pushed for exciting to be a part of this great commission. Sheila Zelensky. The Sheila Zelensky Show. The only show to give you the truth behind the headlines, prophecy, and the deeper things of God. Now, here is your host, and time watchwoman, Sheila Zelinsky. Folks, my next guest is Rudy Davis. He's been a very good friend of Kent Hovind's. He's been involved with the most famous, notable creation speaker, Pastor Kent Hovind, known as Dr. Dino. He was a powerful advocate of Bible creationism. He's already served 100 months in federal prison on a non-501c3 tax-related charge from the IRS. And his supporters say it amounts to a ruthless government campaign of religious persecution and egregious unjust imprisonment for eight years. And now he faces new charges. They want to put him in jail for an additional 100 years behind bars. Incredible story. Rudy Davis, welcome to the program. It is a pleasure to have you on. I know you've been involved in this extensively. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Sheila, for having me, and thank you for the attention uh, that you're, uh, you know, allowing Ken Hovind's story to get out. Ken Hovind, uh, in all my conversations with him, he's always pushed for full disclosure. He's always said he has nothing to hide. He wants to testify before Congress, and it's absolutely atrocious what's happened to this man. And uh, just thank you for letting me tell his story. And I wish that he could call you uh, directly, but they put him in solitary confinement. So when he's not in trial, they lock him up 23 hours a day, and they've restricted his phone access. He was making the rounds and doing interviews, but they, uh, they've restricted that now, and now they got him in a 7 by 9 room. He's sleeping on a mat on the floor, and it's just absolutely atrocious that after eight years, uh, they're still treating this man uh, in such a horrific fashion. Well, and folks, if you don't know this most famous, notable creation speaker, Pastor Kent Hovind, known as Dr. Dino, a powerful advocate of Bible creationism who has already served 100 months plus in federal prison on non-501c3 tax-related charges. Essentially, it's not even... See, Rudy, I think the problem is, is people are confused. They throw the word out there, tax evasion, but this is a completely egregious charge yeah, okay. from the IRS, and it's called structuring, and that is very <laughs> different, isn't it? Oh, Sheila, it's, the, the bad guys always hide, hide behind this fancy language. Ken Hovind committed structuring, and they act like it. And when you tell just a regular person, you know, that he committed this a horrific cr crime of structuring, actually what structuring is for those that have not had the time to look into it, and I didn't even know what it was until just a few months ago, but structuring is withdrawing your own money from your own bank in such a way as to, you know, with the intent to avoid the bank filing a, a report. The entire law of structuring was intended for drug dealers, organized crime, and things like that. It was never intended to be applied to Baptist ministers. And Sheila, for anybody in your listening audience, the IRS, and this is almost a shocking statement that I'm about to make, but the IRS two to three weeks ago, I don't know exactly when, but it was on uh, Fox News, ABC News, as well as other extreme news, but the IRS, because Congress got so mad at them for applying the structuring law to regular citizens, law-abiding citizens, that the IRS came out and apologized and said, we will no longer make it our policy to apply structuring to law-abiding citizens. Well, my question is, if you're going to apologize, who's apologizing to Ken Holman? Because he just spent eight years in prison because of that, and uh, nobody's letting him out. And uh, let me share this with you, too, uh, about structuring, uh, Sheila. This case is about Ken Hovind, but it's actually bigger than him because of all of, all of the corruption and all of the tragedies that they've put up on this man. And it's much bigger than just tax evasion. But what I did, because I was getting tired of, of explaining to my friends what structuring was, Sheila, I said, okay, I just got to show you guys what it is because, you know, they don't believe me when I tell them that he got put in jail for withdrawing his own money from his own bank. But I put on a pair of eyeglasses that had a camera in it. When they opened the bank, I walked inside, I walked up to the teller, and everybody was real nice and smiling, and hello, how you doing? And I handed them a withdrawal slip for $9,999.99. I, I don't advise everybody to do this, but I wanted to make a point. And I wanted to see what they would do, because that's my money and that's my bank. They gave me in cash that amount of money, one penny short of $10,000. I said, thank you very much. She smiled and said, thank you very much. And I waved to the 
uh, bank managers, I walked out, and all of this is on YouTube. I walked to my truck where I had been found, and I said, I just committed a felony. And I, I gave the judge's phone number, and I said, you guys need to call the judge because this is what they put Kent's wife. Kent's wife, his name is Joe, Joe Hogan. They put her in jail for over nine months, and Kent Hogan is in over 100 months in prison for what I just did. And two weeks after that, the IRS apologized for applying structuring laws to regular law-abiding citizens because they realized how stupid that was. Now people will say, well, was that because of your video? I, I, I don't know. I, you know, it just it was a coincidence. It's, it sure was one heck of a coincidence that all of that happened around the same time. Here's another aspect of this, Sheila, and I, I, I need to make it it's just so, it's just so many tragedies. But not only did they charge him with a felony and put him in prison, but over the course of two years, because he was a successful minister, like you said, he put in the creation science evangelical ministry, people sent him a lot of money because they, they liked what he was doing. Well, over the course of a year or two, he withdrew $430,000 from his bank. Well, you know what? The government said, that's our money now because he structured it. So not only did he get sent to prison for supposedly committing this terrible act of structuring, but they said that all of the money that you structured, we're going to seize that now. So he seized a debt of $430,000 to the IRS. Now they say that he's got to pay that money, and they, they seized his dinosaur adventure land and other properties that were in a trust name. It wasn't even in Ken Hovind's name. One thing I need to share about Ken Hovind, if nobody's ever heard about the man before, is he took a vow of poverty. He truly was a minister of the Lord, and he just wanted to win souls for the gospel of the Lord Jesus. He drove a church van. He lived in a church parsonage. He didn't live luxuriously, even though people sent him a lot of money, right? But he, he, he put that in a trust, and other people managed the trust. He just simply went out and, and they debated evolutionists and he preached his creation message. Okay, let me jump in there. So for the audience yeah. to be crystal clear, this trust is what the IRS essentially seized, didn't they? Yes, they did. And, and they said that it was a false trust, but it absolutely was not a false trust. The trust was in charge of all the all of the properties. Ken Hovind's name wasn't uh, on the, those properties. That was being managed by the trust. The case is actually against Ken Hovind and Paul Hanson, and they're both in the courtroom when I attend the court. Not only that, uh, Sheila, but he, he prayed for a gentleman back when this was going on eight years ago on the radio, and nobody had to copy of that. I don't know exactly what he said. But because the IRS agent, Scott Snyder, felt threatened by the prayer, he got an extra three years in prison for that. It's, it's absolutely absurd what's happening to this man. Well, here you have a minister, a science teacher for 15 years, a full-time creation ministry, traveling all the world, doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. He debated more than 100 scientists concerning evolution versus creation. Excellent information. Everybody can see his information linked there at Weekend Vigilante. We have all his websites. So you have this incredible man. A minister who's living a meager lifestyle, doesn't live like Joel Osteen or the mega pastors, a very moderate lifestyle. Yes. They never did tell him what his violation was. Had nope. he been under 501c3, the ministry probably would have paid little tax dollars. So the IRS swoops in the transactions right. that he was accused of, one in 12 days. Now, with structuring the way it is set up, and it's usually typically for, you alluded to this earlier, it's a structure for drug dealers. So, you know, essentially, yes. drug dealers got smart and said, well, let's take out $9,999 because Congress passed a law that they wanted to catch drug dealers if anyone takes out sums over ten grand in one day. Well, Kent Hoven doesn't own anything, so not only did they seize his church property, the U.S. attorney seized that church account. Not only that, but then we find out that he didn't even make those transactions. He was making them, you know, maybe one in 12 days, paying church bills out of a church fund. And yet he's guilty of 45 counts of structuring, money spent on church bills. How does that work? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane. And this was his ministry's money, and it was managed by the trust, and it was not obtained illegally. And, and the fact that they seized it, people mention that $430,000, he ran Dinosaur Adventureland, which was a creation science dinosaur theme park that was based on biblical truth. And, and he was paying the bills and, and things that went along with that park. And over the period of two years, that's not a whole lot of money. You know, when you look at the running, uh, you know, the Dinosaur Adventureland that he was doing. And the government and his enemy camp, because he does have an enemy camp, Sheila. I mean, there's a devoted set of people 
to smear his name and to ruin his reputation. They want you to think it's all about taxes. That's their story. But the truth is, Sheila, that if anybody has a chance, well, this is a, this is a battle, a spiritual battle of good versus evil. And people say I'm being too dramatic. They need to go watch his video. This man was talking about the New World Order long before anybody else was talking about yes, the New World Order. Yes. I mean, back in 1999, 2000, he was talking, you know, go watch a video called Creation Science Evangelism, uh, video number five. That video sent the government all out. Uh, it, it caused them to blow their stack. And they said, oh my goodness, we cannot have this man exposing the truth about what's going on in all these different areas. They went after They targeted him. Not because of any tax issues. That, that's what they use to make everybody scared. Rudy, what it's about is it's not just IRS targeting conservative Christians on these egregious charges, but IRS has always been attacking nine five zero one c three ministries, that's and right. that's exactly what he had. But how do you spend eight years and four months for bogus structuring? Okay, let's forget that one. But now, incredibly, now let's fast forward. He should have been out by now because of all the chicanery going on at the IRS seizing his account property. He sends out a letter based on legal advice. He sends out a Bivens lawsuit. I mean, there was a Bivens lawsuit. So he yep. essentially files a list pendants, meaning basically a pending litigation. This particular property you're looking at essentially could be an issue. That's it. And then right. they charge you with another potentially want to put you away for a hundred more years. So essentially what he's looking at is 100 more years based on sending a letter out which you're calling mail fraud and conspiracy right. to commit mail fraud. It's, it's insane. The average sentence, Sheila, for a tax-related crime, for a similar crime that came over to me, it was 14 months. 14 months. He spent eight years in prison. Even if somebody disagrees with me and they say that he's guilty of the charges, all of the charges, that they said he committed, which I don't believe for a second, Sheila. I believe he's innocent. And Ken Holden has maintained his innocence the whole time. But even if somebody says, well, I think he's guilty, he spent eight years in prison already. There's pedophiles and murderers that get out of prison uh, long before Ken Hovind does. And, it, and like you said, he spent eight years in prison, 100 months, and as he's, as he's about to be released, this good, godly man who's got a message of truth never backs down on any truthful subject. He'll tell you the truth about any subject you ever want to talk about. As soon as he's about to get out, Oh my goodness, guess what, Sheila? They said he mailed a letter and now they're going to put him in prison for another 20 to 100 years. He's 62 years old, Sheila. If they keep him in prison for another 20 years, he'll be 82. That's a life sentence. They put a possible 100 years on him. There's no limit on the amount of time they can put on a criminal contempt of court. And this judge, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, oh my goodness, I could spend a whole lot of time talking about uh, the, the anti-bias Christian history of this particular judge. The same judge that he had eight years ago, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, is the same judge that he's got today. The same prosecutor, Tiffany Hope Eggers, that he had eight years ago, he's got today. IRS agent Scott Snyder that came against him eight years ago, IRS agent Scott Snyder's in the courtroom sitting at the prosecution table right now today. It's absolutely absurd. The judge should have recused herself, and he should be getting a new judge. And he asked her to recuse herself multiple times, and she refuses to do so. Real pastor sits in prison while the fake Reverend Sharpton owes several million <laughs> back taxes and the IRS does right. nothing. The incredible chicanery and shenanigans that the IRS is involved in, the Lois Lerner and the, the gang of hucksters, and yet they can target this conservative Christian man on such outrageously egregious charges that they've already apologized for this structuring law. I mean, it's so incredible, it's almost hard to wrap a person's head around. If they, if they can do this to Ken Hovind, she don't, they can do it to anybody. It's Ken Hovind today, it's us tomorrow. If we don't stand up for our brother, Ken Hovind, who they've uh, religiously targeted and uh, persecuted for, for no reason, I believe he's an innocent man in prison. But let me share a little bit uh, with you about this Judge Margaret Dickey Rogers. In the original trial in 2007, uh, during the sentencing portion of Ken Hovind's Ken case, she said that his crimes were worse than that of a rapist. Now, that isn't in the trial transcript. It was, it was taken out. It took 16 months to get the trial transcript. And you say, well, what evidence do you have that she said it since it wasn't in the trial transcripts, which, oh, by the way, should have been received long before 16 months. It took 16 months for him to receive it. There was eight people that signed an affidavit that said that they heard her say that, right? And so you have to make a, a conclusion. Did eight people get together and collude the lie about her saying that, or did she really say it? Kent Hovind being the leader or organizer of an extensive criminal operation. That's how she viewed his Baptist ministry. Uh, not only that, but the, the Council of Structuring, 
there's case law and evidence to suggest that she should not have been able to stack the case law to give him the long sentence uh, that he was he was given that he should have been just one example of case law not multiple counts and during this whole trial back in 2000-2008 the IRS booklet says to write out to a CPA write out to a consultant write out to an attorney and you need to get their in, in opinion about something that may be questionable and Ken Holden did that he wrote off and he has the letters where they sent him back and said you're a Baptist minister you're, you don't have to uh, pay the taxes and uh, so he was operating under under legal advice from exactly the people that the IRS said that he should reach out to and ask for advice. I mean, the more I got into this case, Sheila, the more I started to learn, because I always thought, this is Ken Holden, he's an icon, I and mean, he helped me understand the lives of evolution. He had a huge impact on my life. I just, I just thought somebody else was going to be taking care of the man, and somebody else must be paying attention. But when I, when I started to do it myself and pay attention to what's going on, I got down on my knees and weeped, and I said, oh my goodness, Lord, how have we let this happen to this man, and I didn't do anything about it. And I said, we've got to stand up. We've got to make this known. We started to get the word out. And, he, and Ken Holden, he's always said, I maintain my innocence from the beginning. I want people to look at this case. And the more you look at it, the more egregious you find out that it is. You mentioned he impacted you. Well, he's impacted yes. us all. Now, it is very clear after I've looked at this that the judge who has developed quite a reputation among those following the case is having a very strong anti-Christian bias. Just so everybody knows, this week on Monday... Kent was scheduled to begin a new trial for being charged, now get this, for using the prison mail system, quote, fraudulently to appeal his previous 58 felony count conviction. And Dr. Hoven yep. has been transferred to and from 23 or 24 different prison That's right. facilities. That's right. The reason they do that is that they're trying to get somebody to shake him. They want, they want somebody to kill him inside the prison system so that he won't get out. Because if Kent Hoven gets out, he's going to expose a lot of people and what they've done to him and, and also he knows a lot about what's going on in the world and, and so uh, the message that he preaches and uh, he stands on the word of God they're terrified of this man he really is a dangerous man to the new world order and let me also share the same judge Margaret Casey Rogers she was involved in the uh, the school principal his name is Frank Lay where Frank Lay said a prayer a blessing over some food at a, a full event and I think 60 congressmen had to step in because this judge Margaret Casey Rogers was threatening to put an injunction against this principal to put him in jail for praying a blessing over his food. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, and, and also I'll say this, you know, when I go to her courtroom, uh, I was sitting in the court and I was sitting in the, you know, the audience chamber portion and I opened up my Bible, right? And, uh, and one of the courthouse officers came over in a very rude way, told us that you're not allowed to have an open Bible in the Judge Margaret Casey's uh, courtroom. It's just her policy that when you're in her courthouse, you will not have an, uh, an open Bible in her courtroom. It's absolutely absurd what's going on. Our founders will absolutely be turning over in their graves uh, to see what's going on in this country nowadays. I, I was just so horrified when I found out this little tidbit of information that of all the people that Dr. Ken Hoven has absolutely impacted, Rudy, that no Christians basically have done anything here. And there, how many showed up even to support him in court in Pensacola, Florida for this trial? There was, what, a handful. It is so egregious. But people need to go watch his creation science evangelism videos. I mean, you're missing out on a, on a rare nugget of life if you don't watch his videos. Uh, his debate videos, his creation science evangelism videos. He talks about biblical truth in a way. He really has been gifted a talent of God that is so rare. And to listen to him talk and to explain biblical truth at such a level that anybody can understand it. I tell you, I was caught up in the lies and deceptions of this world. And uh, when, when I heard Ken Hogan talk, he explained things in such an easy way. It's like, wow, I never really thought to think about something like that. And he's making total sense. And uh, he knows how to tear down the lie of evolution. He debated three or four uh, evolutionists, you know, at the same time. He, he could do it with his... He calls it to have his brain tied behind his back. And uh, he really has been gifted with a scientific mind and an uh, articulate mind. And uh, we need this man on the outside. This man needs to be on the outside. And uh, it's not a numbers game. You know, the Bible Gideon didn't need a lot of numbers. So I, I don't want to say that, uh, you know, it is a numbers. But I'm just saying it's, it is shameful that good Christian men in Pensacola area, if, if good Christian men and women in the Pensacola area, you need to be at 1 North Palafox, and that's Peterson Paul, uh, ALA, Palafox, a drive in Pensacola, Florida at that federal courthouse every single day and show support for our brother. If nothing else, just to be encouraging to Kent when he turns around, 
there's more than like 10 people sitting back there. The courthouse can help 50 people. Sometimes there's only five people sitting back there, right? Uh, it's like, look at all the benefits this man has delivered. He's impacted my life. I know he's impacted thousands, if not tens of thousands of others. Where, where are we when he needs us? Because he was there when we needed him. He stood up for the truth when nobody else would do so, and he needs our help now. Well, and I am actually organizing right now for all of next week. We're going to be setting up a phone bomb to the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, against the Governor of Florida. We are going to jam up that phone line for the next month Thank if God. we have to, because we're not going to sit idly by and let this... This is just the work of the devil. This is right out of the battle of hell. And you mentioned Gideon's Army. This is a flagrant case of Christian persecution. And if we don't stand up for this man, God help us. Because Kent himself Amen. says, Amen. Look, he says, my life, Rudy. Back it's back just back. so egregious. It just absolutely keeps me up at night. That It is crickets chirping in the pulpit right now. It just <laughs> sickens me. Well, they put, that, they put that word tax evader or tax protester. They put that label for somebody. And Ken Owen has said, I am not a tax protester. I'll pay, I've, I've always paid every tax I owe. And it scares the heck out of everybody because they think they're going to get uh, attacked by the IRS or something if they come associated with a man. If this man look, that man exposes so much darkness that it's absolutely out of control. John David Roy Atchison. That was the first U.S. prosecutor that seized Kent's bank account. He was the first prosecutor eight years ago that was coming against Kent. He was on a team, right? Uh, part of that team was Tiffany Hill Beggars, who's coming against him now. But John David Roy Atchison was caught in a pedophile scheme. Now, that sounds shocking, but I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to look at his name and go read about it. It made national news when, the, when they arrested him in that scheme and they put him in jail cell. As he was in trial for pedophilia, he hung himself and he killed himself. That was the kind of prosecutor coming against Ken Hovind eight years ago, John David Roy Atchison. Absolutely insane. Let me also say this. Ken Hovind has written 37 books while in prison. One of the books is called The Kennel, K-E-N-N-E-L. It is a powerhouse of a book because he exposes the prison industrial complex. Some of these judges and some of these U.S. attorneys, you know, some of these congressmen have financial interest in the prison industrial complex. Well, if you're a judge and you've got a financial investment in the prison industrial complex, well, hey, it behooves you to give a longer sentence because the more people you can jam into this prison system, the more money you're going to make. And Ken Hogan exposes that. So when you start looking into the Ken Hogan situation and all the things that he exposes, judicial corruption, U.S. attorney corruption with the pedophile attorney, the corruption about misapplied structuring laws, the, the corruption about the prison industrial complex. It's like, where does this guy stop? You know, it's like everywhere he goes, he's like a bike, he just shines light into every dark place that you can possibly imagine. One thing about Tim Holman that's not, that you're going to find that's different about him than any other pastor, is he found Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Bible. And most pastors, if you go to say, why don't you just bow down a little bit, you won't make the team so mad, and he won't throw them up fire. Tim Holman is the top of pastor. And he says, I'm not bowing down even a little bit. I'm going to share the truth if I know it to the best of my ability, and I don't care. He, he does care. He wants to be out of prison. He wants to be with his family and his grandchildren. But he's not going to bow the knee to bail. He's not going to bow the knee at all. He's, he doesn't compromise. And that's what we love about the man. But at the same time, we need to get him out of prison. And thank God for your shows, Sheila, and others that do speak up. But we need a lot more. And we pray, God, that people... Uh, keep get convicted in their heart, but we've got to say something about the, the persecution going against our brother in the Lord. Well, and God actually uh, commissions us to be going to the prisons. Remember the scripture. Amen. And also, Acts chapter 12, 5, the prayer was made without ceasing. We need to be in prayer. And I'm organizing a fast, one-day fast and prayer specifically for Ken next week. And, and you know, another thing you did in jail, in addition to being a truth teller and just a progenitor of this truth movement, he's a trailblazer, but he also led 700 people to the Lord while in jail. Yes. And, you know, yes. folks, if you can get out to Pensacola, Florida, to that state federal court, please, I urge you to go in droves, get out, support them. I've got freekentoven.com. Go there yes. for updates. It's posted there, folks, at weekendvigilante.com. Get behind this. His son, Eric, I know Rudy, is continuing on with the sales. Get his stuff, folks. Support this. If you can't get out to Florida, support it financially. This is the challenge, folks. We have to be like Gideon's Army. This is a Case again of Christian persecution. It's time Hello? to sound the trumpet, isn't it? 
Amen. Who's calling? Amen. Amen, Sheila. And uh, another website, another good one, is the one you mentioned, uh, as well as 2peter3.com, uh, where you can learn about Ken, his ministry. And as you said, he's not uh, Ken right Holman, he, he said that being in prison is a distraction to his main goal. His main goal is to win people to the Lord. And he's won over 700 people uh, to the Lord while in prison. And we, uh, we praise know. God for Ken Holman. And God is using Ken Holman even though he's in prison. But uh, like you said, the Bible instructs us to pray for those in prison, and he doesn't have to remain in prison. And just because he's in prison doesn't mean that's where the Lord wants him. And uh, we need to pray our brother out of prison okay, so that he can um, again receive his ministry. Do you want to send him a text message? Hey, if we don't have to do um, this to this man, morning. this this good godly man, who's going to stand up for us when they come for us? I mean, this is uh, this is a flagrant example of Christian persecution. The Lord tells us to you know to visit those in prison. If you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it to me. We need to pray our brother out of prison, and we need to get excited about it. And um, it's just, it's just, we cannot let this stand in America. And they're using this as a test case, and they're, they're, they're seeing how that we react. And we've got are to, we've on, got to react to pray. The, the appropriate list? reaction is to get outraged and to pray and to fast. Are and I will participate with you in that fashion. And praise God for that. Tim was supposed to come on the show Friday. We don't know what is going to happen now with him possibly being a, detained in isolation. So I'm really glad that you did come on the program because you're so right. We, we need to make some noise. We need to stand up for this man who has impacted an incredible amount of lives. Get a van and pack it out and go support Kent. And I just cannot say enough about, um, you know, the support that you guys have given Rudy. I wish we all had a Rudy in a situation like this. But 100 months in jail is one thing. But wanting to put him away for the rest of his life on just trumped up egregious charges is just, again, such a flagrant case of Christian persecution. You know, we are seeing the unfolding oh, of an absolute okay. and, um, fourth right here in America. And it sometimes? is time for people to quit being armchair Christians okay. and get off their All butts right. and do something. Amen. Amen. There's no such thing as an undercover Christian, Sheila. Amen. Well, these devils aren't going to get away with this, and I'm going to be like a pit bull in this case because Amen. we will not stop until this yeah, is righted. God is a God of righteousness and justice. It's a foundation of his name, and we're not going to allow this to happen to our brother. It is so outrageous, and again, I just really appreciate this. Folks, I want you to go That's to the okay. website, get on these yeah, links where he does updates, and again, right his now. channel is linked there as well. You can get all Thank that information much. at weekendvigilant.com, and again, I mean, we've got to make some noise. Like they said, Gideon's army. That's what Gideon's army did. Uh, Gideon only had 300, and they uh, made a lot of noise, and they shone, sh shined a lot of light, and the enemy started fighting amongst themselves, right, and killed themselves, right? And so that's what Kent wants us to do. He wants us to make noise and shine light, and Kent, Kent's got nothing to hide. He wants full disclosure. He wants people to look into his case, and your website, we can vigilante. Uh, dot com has that as well as uh, if you want um, if, if you link that to freekenhoven dot com has all the information to look at his past charges his new charges we're, we're not going to shut up like you said we're going to be a pit bull on this and we're not letting go and we will make a lot of noise and shine a lot, a lot of light I really appreciate you coming on Brady I want to have you back to give us updates and again we hope that Kent can come on the program and we'll see how this plays out but we plan on jamming up some phone lines we're going to make it very awkward on the governor the attorney general and the doj we're gonna we're gonna make some noise Rudy. amen 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 god bless you for what you're doing and keep us posted all right you're an answer you're an answer to prayer and a blessing from god sheila we praise god for you thank you so thank much you, Rudy. Again, folks, that was Rudy Davis, and the information is linked there at WeekendVigilante.com. We have a bunch of websites up. Check that out, and please go to FreeKentHoven.com. And if he's not still in isolation Friday, we're hoping to have Kent Hoven on the program, and we're going to be organizing a phone bomb. We're going to be calling the governor of Florida. We're going to be calling Department of Justice, and we're going to light up those phone lines for the next month if we have to. We're going to really make some noise, folks, and I'll be posting numbers, and I'll be doing an email blast. So thank you very much again for tuning into the program. Good night, and God bless.